Hello and welcome to GeoProducts' technical web series. Today we're going to be talking about EnviroGrid and base applications. I'm Mike Jotsky. I'm the technical director here at GeoProducts. Uh, feel free to reach out to us at any time for any design help or any product help at all. So, how do GeoCells function when loaded in a base application? There's basically three mechanisms that come into play. We have your active earth pressure, which is being, when, when it's loaded, that pressure is going to be pushing the soil out and pushing it into the other cells. And then you have your passive pressure pushing back against that to keep it from moving. And then we also add in the strength of the cell wall itself. So you have your tensile strength of your cell plus your seam strength, which creates the hoop stress, which help to keep that material in place. So you have all these hoops supporting each other. Um, through testing, we found that about 27 cells surrounding a single loaded cell will support that one cell. Um, give it strength. So one thing to consider though is that you need to make sure that you're getting a geo cell that's going to have high quality seams and high quality tensile strength that's not going to snap. Um, there's lots of products out there made with recycled plastics or other additives that just don't weld well together and they're going to be much weaker. So at a certain um, loading capacity they're going to break and they're not going to work and as soon as you lose that system it, the geo cell effect completely goes away. So having that whole system, you create a nice mattress effect, um, which basically reduces the stress on the subgrade. So instead of having a really high vertical stress or a very high loading, especially at the top um, where it translates right into that sub base, it gets spread out and that stress is much is reduced greatly. So you don't get rutting um, like you do with other materials. So through testing, we found um, that uh, we can design and to help designers we've created a structural coefficient number a layer coefficient number for EnviroGrid uh, to be able to plug into an ASHTO um, equation uh, to come up with a design. So each material, um, if you're not familiar with ASHTO structural layer coefficients, uh, every material has its own number. So basically sand has a number um, that's much lower than stone, um, it's 0.07, whereas stone has a structural coefficient of 0.14, and GSL is gonna be much higher than that. Um, we do provide this um, calculator on our website, um, so you can get to that if you need to. Um, so for this scenario, just as an example, uh, we put in some loading characteristics, and we found that if we were just gonna use stone, we would need 36 inches of stone, whereas if we use some EnviroGrid, um, if we did eight inches of base work with stone and then eight inches of EnviroGrid filled with any type of drain material, we would get the same performance as 36 inches of stone by itself. Or we could just do 10 inches of EnviroGrid as well. We do two layers um, of EnviroGrid to get to that 10 inches, but you'd end up with the same performance either way. So you can see there's a huge labor savings in being able to not have to dig as much, uh, not have to bring in as much material, and also not have to use as much uh, high quality material in your application because if you're gonna be using just stone, you have to use a high quality material. Same case with uh, biaxial grid, you have to use a high quality material where GeoCell, you can use sand or any other locally sourced drain material as long as it doesn't have uh, drained or uh, clay content in it. So we talked about the stress reduction. So uh, the test that we did recently um, on the left here, you can see the control section is that red line at the top. So that's the stress at the uh, interface between the subgrade and the top layer. And then the blue line at the bottom is um, uh, EnviroGrid. So we see that there was a 50% reduction in the stress at the subgrade level um, by using EnviroGrid. Same test ran with uh, biaxial grid came up with um, about an 18 to 20 percent reduction in stress. So there's a huge difference in the stress that um, is placed on the subgrade when using a geo cell versus a biaxial or two dimensional product. Also, the rutting is uh, very much reduced as well because two dimensional products um, really aren't able to control lateral spreading very well. Um, whereas GeoCell can. So on the right side here, um, just for an example, to get to one inch of rut 
for a EnviroGrid system, you would need over or close to two and a half million passes to get to that. Whereas with a um, system that has a biaxial grid, uh, about 24,000 passes, you would be at one inch of rut depth. So huge benefit in being able to utilize the GeoCell versus a um, two-dimensional product. So one thing you do need to consider though when you're designing is, of course, you have to pick what cell aperture you need. So if you're gonna have really small vehicle loading, foot traffic, ATV traffic, golf carts, you're gonna need to use a smaller cell because you don't want that load to be able to, to get into the middle of that cell and turn and it will, it will push the material out. But if that load is able to bridge over one cell, then you'll be okay. So low for roads, um, parking lots, driveways, and EGA 30 is sufficient to be able to support tire loads. EGA 40 really isn't used for load applications unless it's used in a sub-base application where there's going to be another layer on top of it um, that's going to bridge those cells. Um, height is going to depend on loading again, which our calculator will calculate for you. Um, and then, um, yeah, you just have to go from there, design your system out, figure out how many panels you need, and we can help you figure out all of that. So the benefits really are it's a lot easier to install. You're going to use a lot less material. You're going to be able to use less quality material so that it's going to be cheaper material you have to use to infill your soil. And maybe it's even on site material that you just excavate out and put right back in. Um, you can even fill it with road millings. Um, we do that a lot. Um, we'll put it on the shoulders. We'll mill the road, put the millings right into the geo cell, and um, you're able to drive right on it. Uh, make a great soldier. soldier. Um, and um, we do get good drainage through it. You have drainage all the way through, plus we have the perforations, which will allow um, draining, drainage to happen horizontally as well. Um, and it's just a great product to be able to use for anything. So. Again, I pretty much mentioned all of these applications, but uh, it can really be used for any base applications where you're going to have a soft subgrade. So I'm Mike Jotsky again. Appreciate your time. I look forward to talking to you next time.